Now, step three is when we get to finally showing and proving. So we wanna show it is true for n equals to k plus one. That is two plus four plus six plus two k plus two k plus one equals to this, okay? So to show it's true for n equals to k plus one, we want to prove that this side equals to the right hand side. So we need to write that is and then write this out. Now how do I get this equation over here? Well, we're substituting k plus one to wherever there's n. So here, instead of two n, I'm writing two k plus one. So how do I know that's two k? Well, if you think about it, each of these is just increasing by one. So if it's k plus one, the number in front is gonna be one less in terms of n, isn't it? So that's gonna be k plus one minus one, so that's why it's two k. And the number in front will be two k minus one, won't it? And how do I get the right hand side? Well, I'm just substituting k plus one into this equation here. So instead of n, I've written k plus one. And instead of n plus one, I have k plus one and then plus one again for this over here. And then summarizing that, we get k plus one, k plus two, yeah? So we wanna prove that this equals to that. That's what we're doing. So how do we prove? We always do left-hand side equals to right-hand side. So starting off here, we have the left-hand side equals to this portion. Now, this is where I want you to use the assumption from step two. Can you see how we can somehow use the assumption? Well, looking at what's assumed in step two, two plus four plus six, two K equals to K times K plus one. Can you see how this part of the assumption looks exactly the same as this part of the proof we're trying to make? Yeah, this is exactly the same as that, right? Which means that instead of writing that, I can just substitute this into here. Okay? So instead of writing that, I've just substituted k times k plus one instead of that. And this just stays the same. So now I'm just rewriting the left-hand side to prove it equals the right-hand side. And you can see that once we've used the assumption, we now have that k plus one and k plus one is a common factor. So I can factorize that out the front and that leaves me with k plus two. And that looks exactly the same as the right hand side. So we can say that now we've made the proof. We've made the proof that the left hand side equals to right hand side. So therefore we've proved this over here. So therefore, since we've made the proof that this equation does equal to that, we can say it is true for n equals to k plus one. Now I want you to consider what have we actually done in all these steps? Well, in step one, we proved that it's true for n equals to one, didn't we? And now we've proved that it's n is true for n equals to k plus one. That is any number plus one. So we've actually proved that n is equal, n is true for n equals to one. And when k equals to one, n is true for two. And also true for n equals to three and four and so on. So therefore we can make the conclusion that the statement is true for n equals to one as well as any number greater than that, haven't we? So we can just simplify that to n is greater or equals to one. So remember, once we've gone through the steps, we have to write the concluding sentence, which says that yes, we've actually proved that the left-hand side equals to right-hand side for all n is greater or equals to one.